essentially this whole area is un in a state of natural uh, succession. I mean, as you can see here, is a shag bark, a young shag bark hickory. These are just naturally occurring. We have some larger ones, so the squirrels tend to, and the blue jays tend to s spread quite a few around. We've got a uh, a bur oak over here. These are kind of growing in the sub canopy, and above us we have a pioneer species, which is uh, balsam poplar. We also have uh, some really large eastern cottonwoods, and quite a bit of trembling aspen. And I know in one of our previous videos on feeding the rabbits, we came up and you can kind of see it in behind me here. We cleared quite a few of the younger poplars out. And I, I want to reiterate, we don't have any problem with poplars. They're going to continue to be a part of the, the food forest. It's just as part of the, the succession, I guess, is really what it is. We are planning to um, promote the plants that are beneficial to us, provide mostly food and potentially uh, timber for for firewood and that sort of thing too. But uh, essentially nothing will really go to waste. Even if we cut some of these poplars down, we may use some of the stems for uh, uh, some of our um, terraces and whatnot because uh, we have them here. So we're kind of down near one of the two sections of the pond. This is the shallower one. They're actually slightly separated and this one's pretty much dry. There's quite a bit of willow growth in there, which is completely fine. And some younger cottonwoods, which we probably will not allow all of these eastern cottonwoods to uh, grow to the size of an adult because that would just be crazy. <laughs> well, we are going to let that weeping willow grow over there. Yep, we're going to leave that one. There's two of them there. But what I was actually going to look at is the ostrich ferns that we planted last year. and. Uh, they, although they haven't spread yet, they are doing quite well here along the edge of this pond. We have some plans to uh, supplement them with another planting of uh, the edible ostrich fern. And they're doing pretty well here. We kind of, you can see the natural transition. We kind of planted them along the line because I'll, although there is a bird's foot trefoil growing there, once you get kind of this side of the line, a lot of the plants are much more water loving. Well, we kind of did it the first year we moved here. This was water. We've it was quite wet. on it. Yep. So this kind of shows you for <laughs> end of May, and this is like I say, one of the two pond areas. This shows you how dry we actually are. So it's going to be an it's going to be an interesting summer, and I think anything we move to the food forest is going to have a bit of a tough go in the next couple of years. Survival unless, of the uh, fittest. Well, yeah, and these are doing quite well. Speaking of survival of the fittest, so now we're kind of in the area as I pan around. This is where we planted or transplanted some of our spearmint as a ground cover. And something we did in here too was we released a few things. So in here we actually have all three or four of the native poplars. We have the eastern cottonwood, which are the big ones. This is trem or uh, large tooth aspen, which is kind of cool. We have the trembling aspen and the balsam poplar on the other side. So you can have quite a bit of diversity. Well, what we basically did in here before we planted the, uh, the spearmint, which I will show you in a moment, we kind of released things and we basically cut out uh, mostly European buckthorn, cut them right down to the ground and chopped them up and I don't even see some of the stems like they must have started to break down. But uh, we've obviously left some things like uh, this is an ash, I think it's a green ash. Uh, this one here, which again because of the emerald ash borer won't have a long Lifespan. No, but you might as well leave it long enough to become decent firewood. I exactly. And then beside it here is a cherry. I believe this is a black cherry, a young one. So we've left that. We did take out again some of the sumacs. We left a few. Uh, you can see as we go that way, we didn't work in that area. And there's quite a tangle of dogwoods and uh, European buckthorn. But at the same time, it does provide quite a bit of cover. But when we come over here, you can see the spearmint. This is one of the patches. Is uh, going like mad considering it is quite dry so that's a good thing it's uh definitely good to uh to have it in here because it's a useful plant and uh it'll help be a pretty decent ground cover as well and we'll have so much we won't know what to do with here's another little batch that uh is taking off quite well no and it's been so dry but uh, we'll see how it does. It's going to be kind of survival of the fittest. I'm not super concerned about uh, the, uh, the mint. I'm pretty sure it's going to take off. 
but there is some other uh, edible stuff. There's some wild strawberries and, and whatnot in here and lots of cover for birds. And then we also have in the same area these uh, high bush cranberry that we kind of, uh, we found them in here when we were planting the mint and uh, released them and they're looking like they're flowering pretty good. So we may actually uh, get a few to harvest. Although we will admit, they're not our favorite. It's still edible. And we've got another one right there, which is pretty cool. So we're kind of excited to continue on with the uh, releasing down here. But uh, all in all, the things that we have planted are doing pretty good, or what we've added seem to be doing relatively well. And there's the pond, the bigger part of the pond. And it's low. It's pretty low again. It normally is. I mean, that's a good four or five feet lower than usual. It uh, often comes up to about my finger. And it actually does spill over into that other small pond. But uh, it's quite low, but at the same time it's nice to have it because uh, you've always got the water. And we always kind of toy with the idea, could you put fish in it? That sort of thing. They'd probably survive. The only thing we could probably really put in it would be like goldfish or something pretty hardy. And then it's kind of a... Why bother? Well, what purpose does it serve? And uh, we're also... This is an area that's used by a lot of amphibians for spawning, or for, I guess spawning, whatever you want to call it, breeding uh, salamanders and a bunch of different frog species. So it's kind of like if we put the fish in, then we would lose that function too, so. So we've traveled up to another tier. Yep, Trying to give see. people a concept of all the tiers and levels in here. There's a lot of them. Somewhat chose to develop it. But uh, we're up by our last stop, which is going to be looking at some of our uh, dwarf cherry bushes that we planted in here. And we got to find them. <laughs> the hard part. Right here. That's actually doing quite well. So these are the valentine. So we've made a conclusion. Although they do seem to be doing quite well. Here's another uh, valentine dwarf cherry there. We need to come up here and we need to mulch. <laughs> so we don't lose them because we were there's another one uh, over there, oh, yeah. right here. So we are going to make that a priority at some point, and I think we're going to have to come in and maybe cut about 50% of these uh, sumacs back again. They're giving shade, which is a good thing because it's keeping it a bit uh, better growing condition on this side. But at the same time, they're vigorous growers, like you can see this is all fairly quick growth. So we'll, we'll have to knock some of them back in the succession or we'll end up with our cherries uh, over, overtaken. And this was a bed that we kind of mulched with uh, various things and uh, we put in our Romeo um, cherries and there are some. There's one right here. These are the ones that uh, got kind of knocked back big time by the goats so we're pretty sure a lot of them did not make it. There's another one here actually, which is doing quite well, which is good. On this side, we lost a bunch of them, and it was a little drier on this side of the uh, planting area, and I don't see any that survived, so we'll probably have to uh, replant this side, or plant something different. We talked about planting some pear trees up here. But what has done well, well I shouldn't say well, what has survived is the comfrey that I got from Miles. We planted uh, several. Now they're looking a little dry because we haven't had any rain, but uh, they're still alive. Here's another comfrey. Again, it's looking pretty dry, but uh, still alive. Yeah, this one does look pretty good actually. So another comfrey. Cherry. And uh, yeah, that cherry looks really good. It needs, there. like you say, mulch badly. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, we'll get them mulched and uh, do a better inventory, but. Uh, Basically, that's kind of our little spring tour, tour, spring the tour forest. of the food forest. And not, not including everything, but it's a big space, and to take you through it all is kind of, uh, you know, it could be boring. But as so far, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what's made it because it's, like I said, up at the Saskatoons. We just planted and left it. So what has survived is strong enough because we had a real good drought last year too. And this stuff pulled through for the mm -hmm. most part. I think the cherries took a beating, but I don't think that was weather. I do think it was because of the goats. A combination. 
Um, by them knocking it back and then getting such a dry spell, I think the, which ones are these ones? Romeo these are the ones? Romeos. Took a bit of a hit, but I'm seeing the ones that made it all look amazing, mm -hmm. even though, yes, we need to do some TLC. But the uh, nice part is, this is like year two, and uh, there's still little things to uh, find in this, explore and find in this uh, food forest area. So we will uh, come back later.